Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, your champions? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time listening, welcome. My name is Mark Singh. I'm an NLP dating coach. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. I'm the only dating coach for men that uses NLP to go into the heads of my clients and remap things like confidence, things like self-worth, so you behave correctly in front of women and thus get their attraction. And this, boys, is why I have such a high success rate, but we will talk about that in a different episode. In this episode, we're going to jump right into it. I know you guys want the content. I know you want to learn. And this one is an absolute must listen because I am going to give you the five essential frame control reversals that you must know because women are going to do what I call frame check you. And if you never heard of frame control, you've definitely come to the right episode. They're going to frame check you. And if you don't pass that frame check, they will not get attracted to you. The first thing I want to communicate to you, gentlemen, is this. If she discovers that she has a stronger frame than you do, she will not get attracted to you. So frame control is literally the most important thing when it comes to attracting women, but most guys have never heard of it. They haven't been educated on this, so they go into dates not knowing what to do, and for some reason, women don't get attracted to them, and they often don't get phone numbers, they don't get second dates, they get blown out so hard, their mustache blows off their best friend's face when the concussion hits. And they're like, what the fuck did I do? You have to have frame control. So I'm excited that you're listening to this, especially if you're a new listener. If you've been listening for a long time, I may have reviewed some of these. I'm not sure if I've reviewed all of them, but it's worth reviewing again because this is so unbelievably important that if she does this to you and you don't pass it and you do what most guys do, which I'm going to explain in this episode, she's going to blow you out. She's going to walk away. She's going to be like, eh, he's not attractive. So we're going to get into these today, gentlemen, five of them, and I'm going to save a couple bonuses for the very end. So make sure to stay tuned till the end, how to turn around a rejection. If she's really mean to you, then how to turn it around on her so it makes it look like you rejected her. This is really good stuff, gentlemen. Let's jump into the content. So if you haven't heard of frame control, what it essentially is, is who is leading the conversation? Who has the conversational power? who's least affected emotionally by the conversational dynamic, who cares less about what happens, and who's essentially in the masculine energy. You, of course, have to be in that masculine energy, leading the conversation, taking her to where she wants to be led in order for her to get attracted to you. If, on the other hand, you do what many guys do, which is to give her the power, she's not going to get attracted to you. Why do guys give her the power? Because we think it's logical, right? We think... If I do her favors, if I let her lead, if I give her what she wants, she's going to like me. So I'm going to blow smoke up her ass. I'm going to fluff her feathers and I'm going to get blown out so hard. Yes, your mustache is going to launch off your face when the concussion hits. So what we need to understand is that women are going to frame check you. Frame check is exactly as it sounds. She's checking the strength of your frame. Imagine you go to Home Depot and you're buying some piece of plywood for a project that you have. You have to lean on that thing in order to make sure that's strong enough to do the job. Women do this to guys to make sure that he's strong enough to be attractive to her because she wants a guy who can lead her, who can protect her, who can show her a good time, and who can take the masculine role. Now, that doesn't mean she's expecting you to protect her and provide for her. She just likes to know that that option is there. So she wants to know, does he have a strong frame? Does he believe in his reality? Is he a leader? Is he willing to lead me? And does he understand how to lead me to where I want to be led? So she starts feeling something inside herself. She starts feeling a little bit uncertain about you. Is this guy really strong or not? And she just wants to say something kind of bitchy to you. She wants to test you. She wants to see if you're going to explain yourself to her or if you're actually an alpha male and you're going to reframe it on her and not buy into her frame. And I want you to listen to that terminology very carefully. Buying into another person's frame is going along with the frame that they've set forth. So if she asks you a question in order for you to explain yourself to her, 
and you buy into it and you do explain yourself to her, she's gonna lose attraction for you, especially if the question is somewhat mean or disrespectful. If she's questioning things like your style, why are you there? Why are you drinking a certain drink? Why don't you have a girlfriend? How many girls have you talked to? Oh, is this what you do? You walk up to all girls and you try to get phone numbers? How many phone numbers have you gotten tonight? You're a player, aren't you? All these things are gonna be said to you to test your frame. Now, yes or no question for you listeners. Would she say this to you if she wasn't at all attracted to you? There was absolutely zero attraction. That's correct. She would not say it because the reason she's saying it is just like the Home Depot plywood example. You have to lean on that thing because you're interested in buying it. So you lean on it to see if it's strong enough to do the job. She's essentially leaning on you. Now, what do most guys do when women say something bitchy, such as, why are you talking to us? They get butthurt, they walk away with their tail between their legs, and they hate women forever. But the correct thing to do is to reframe it, as I'm gonna teach you today with my five essential frame control reversals, reframe it on her, show her that you're unaffected by her frame. You're not gonna explain yourself to her. You are your own judge and jury, and your opinion of yourself is the only one that matters, and you're not going to explain yourself to her. If, on the other hand, a guy has a weak frame, and she says something like, why are you wearing that shirt? He'd explain himself to her. He'd be like, oh, well, it's Gucci, and it looks really nice, and it was expensive, so I think it's pretty good, don't you think? What did he just do? He bought into the frame that she put out, thus she's leading the conversation, and look at this, guys, she's in the masculine role. Do you think women want to be in the masculine or feminine role? Heterosexual women that are attracted to men. Obviously, they want to be in the feminine role. Femininity follows, masculinity leads. But femininity is going to test masculinity by saying mean things to it, seemingly mean, but it's actually a sign of attraction, mean things to it to see if it will buckle, if it will break down, if it is, in essence, not a strong frame, not masculine, but actually is a pussy. So this has probably got a lot of you guys blown out and you didn't even know it. And this is why it's the single most important thing in seducing women. And this is also why it's the backbone of my entire program where I teach guys how to attract women over a three-month period. Frame control is woven throughout all interactions and in everything I teach. Cold reading, push pulls, storytelling, sexual tension, qualifying. All of it is done with frame control as the underlying meaning. So you're talking to a girl, it's going well, and then she says something bitchy to you. And as I said, there are five different ways to reframe or pass her test when she throws the test at you. They are agree and amplify. Number two is misinterpret. Number three is reframe. Number four is ignore. And number five is to reframe into a qualifying question. The first one, agree and amplify. What that means is you agree with what she says and you amplify it to make it 10,000 times worse. For example, she says you're gay, aren't you? A guy with a weak frame would be like, no, no, I'm not gay, I'm heterosexual. Like, why would you think I'm gay? Thus explaining himself to her. A guy with a strong frame, on the other hand, is so secure in his own reality, he's gonna make a joke out of it. Thus agreeing with it, yes, I am gay, and amplifying it. I sucked 2,000 dicks yesterday, my jaw is killing me. Now, at first blush, you think, wait a minute, wasn't he like buying into her frame? No, because buying into her frame would mean you explain yourself to her. This is basically like a politician making a joke out of it. I'm not going to even address what you said because it's so stupid. And honestly, I don't give a shit what you think about me. So I'm going to make a joke of it, thus making you laugh and myself laugh. So not only is it a power play, but it makes her laugh. Same thing happens when a girl asks you, how many girls have you talked to tonight? Rather than being like, oh, I'm not talking to a lot of girls. I'm just, you know, I'm just social and I just like to go around. Instead, you agree and amplify. Let me ask you, how would you agree? How many girls did you talk to tonight and amplify that? You're right. You say I've talked to 250 girls. My goal is 300 girls, just 50 more to go. Hopefully I can get that done. It's getting a little late, but I have faith. I'm going to achieve my goal tonight. I know it. And then she laughs. So she throws a frame check at you. You agree with it and amplify it, thus showing you're unaffected by it. And then the question doesn't matter. You will be amazed at how quickly you just blow past it when you agree with it and you amplify it. Another thing she might say is you're such an asshole. And you say, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not an asshole. I am the king of the asshole, king of the asshole army. In fact, they named me the butthole master. That's what an asshole I am. So thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. 
which goes into my next one, misinterpret. Misinterpret obviously comes from the word misinterpretation. You're misinterpreting what she says to you to mean something else. This is frame control in its essence. A frame is essentially your vision of reality, the way you see reality. We can see it as a picture frame going around a picture. What does that picture have on it? Well, everybody interprets it differently, don't they? So your interpretation of reality is your frame. So if she throws a frame at you and you misinterpret, thus interpreting it differently, that shows a strong frame. For example, she says, why are you wearing that shirt? Going back to the example that I said, and what did the beta guy do? He explains himself. Well, it's Gucci. It's really nice. It fits me good. The guy who's good with women, on the other hand, might misinterpret what she said and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I know you're trying to take off my shirt right now, but relax. We just met. So by saying that, he's basically saying, my interpretation of reality is more important to me than your interpretation of reality. And boys, that is attractive. That is masculine. This is what masculine men do. Their own interpretation, their own filters are the only thing that matters to them. Now, mind you, and this is the biggest mistake when it comes to frame control, she's asking it in a bitchy way. When she asks it in a bitchy way, you can use these reversals. If on the other hand, she's like, well, why don't you have a girlfriend? You're really handsome and you're a great speaker and you're so nice. You're not gonna be like, look, 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 I know you're trying to be my girlfriend right now, but relax, we just met. Which is something I would say if she's like, why don't you have a girlfriend? And she's real bitchy about it. Then I flip it on her. So it's the vibe that she throws at you that dictates whether or not you use these. So as you take these five reversals moving forward, have them with you and use them on girls who ask you a bitchy thing. And I'm gonna get to the creme de la creme one in a second that you can use on almost any question she asks you, but really focus on this. Agree and amplify, misinterpret. And that misinterpret one where she's like, why don't you have a girlfriend? You're like, look, I know you're trying to be my girlfriend right now, but relax is another great example of misinterpreting what she says. The other day I was showing this girl a picture of me and my girlfriends and my pants were a little bit high. I got these long ass legs. They used to call me deer legs in college because I got long skinny legs. And oftentimes girls will make fun of them as I'm going to discuss in a second. Well, she looks at the picture and the first thing she says is your pants are too high. What I said back to that is, why are you staring at my crotch? So you see how I misinterpreted. She's saying that the pants are too high. I'm reframing it by saying you're staring at my crotch, which goes into number three, reframe. The most powerful of the five frame control reversals and the one that I use all the time, boys, steal this one. Four words. The real question is. So when a girl asks you a question... You just say the real question is, and you ask a question back to her. She says, why are you wearing a pink shirt tonight? You say the real question is, why aren't you wearing a pink shirt tonight? This is the shit. She says, Mark, why do you have such skinny legs? You got deer legs over there. The real question is, why are you staring at my legs? Are you like attracted to deer legs or something? Because you seem pretty obsessed with it. Your friend asks you, dude, why are you listening to that stupid podcast and hiring a dating coach? The real question is, why are you so concerned about what I'm doing, bro? Is me trying to better myself making you a little bit insecure? And this goes into a concept, boys, called all about the other. When you say the real question is, you're flipping the frame on them, aren't you? And now it becomes about them. So anything anybody says to you, just say the real question is and ask the question back to them. Why are you wearing a black hat? The real question is, why aren't you wearing a black hat? Or the real question is, why are you so focused on my hat? Or the real question is, why are you trying to take my hat off, bro? Are you secretly attracted to me? See how you can flip it on them and then just ask them a question back. This is frame control in its essence. I want you guys to remember this. Tattoo it on your forehead. The real question is gangster level shit. I use it on girls all the time. And gentlemen, I am telling you, when a girl frame checks you, which again, she asks you a question in a bitchy way. Like the other night, I had a girl ask me, is that one of your pickup lines? And I said, the real question is, is that one of your pickup lines? Is that what they teach you to say to all the guys when they come pick you up in the girly magazines? Relax, we just met. No need to use your lines on me. It's all good, Sarah. And then I blew right past it. Amazingly, when you reframe it on them and show them that you're going to take the conversational power, 99% of the time they will acquiesce to your strong frame, to your masculinity, and go right along with you. Very rarely will they fight you on it. And if they do, let's say she reframes it on you, then reframe it back on her. She does it again, then do it back to her. And I've had battles with chicks where I used all these five different ones and then they couldn't keep up and I won. 
after I won, attraction was on, just skyrocketed through the roof. In fact, girls who are highly in their masculine energy want to be into their feminine energy, but most guys can't put them there. So when you show them that you have a strong frame, this gets massive attraction with girls who are oftentimes challenging to guys or who are too in their masculine. They go into their feminine, they fucking love it, bro. You are gonna get so laid. You're gonna get more ass than a toilet seat. I promise you, this works that well. Fourth one, ignore. If she says something and you didn't hear it, it's like she didn't say it. So she asks you, why are you here alone? Do you really come to the nightclubs alone? You kind of look at her in a second. You'd be like, hey, did you hear the story about the fight outside? And you completely change the subject. This kind of goes into one frame control thing that I do a lot where a girl will be drinking a drink and I'll just grab the drink, drink it and hand it back to her and then keep talking as if nothing happened. It's communicating my frame is so strong. My reality is so strong that you can't even get into me. Like I'll ignore it if I don't want to talk about it. Or as in a recent episode I just recorded, being a politician. So for example, on that one, the politician's on stage and one of the reporters asks, so what are you going to do about the environmental problem that's happening, I don't know, in Texas? And he doesn't want to answer that question. So instead he says, I think the better question is, what am I going to do about Israel and Hamas? You guys are focused on these infinitesimally small issues here in the States where we have a war going on overseas. We have famine happening in Palestine. So what I'm going to do there is X, Y, Z thing. And this is what politicians do. Now, a lot of you guys listening might be getting butthurt about this. You may think this guy's an asshole. He's just trying to control things. He's avoiding things. But guys, you have to understand, she's the one who's bringing the bitchy energy into it. She's like, oh my God, why are you wearing that shirt? That level of being bitchy, you need to reframe it. Because if you don't, she is going to lose any and all attraction for you. So in essence, if you are getting butthurt about this, that kind of tells me a little bit about your frame, by the way. If you're getting butthurt, that says that I can get into your frame. You don't believe enough in what you believe to be unaffected by what I'm saying. But if you have an open mind to this, which I'm sure a lot of you listening do, you see how this is truth where a girl's going to test you. She's going to do shit to see if you have boundaries, to see, as I always say, if you're not to be fucked with. And if a girl decides that you can be fucked with, she's gone. She's out like sauerkraut. She's off like a prom dress. See you later, masturbator. After a while, pedophile, you're all blown out. Trust me, boys. I have been in thousands and thousands of interactions. I have coached over 5,000 men in this. This works, and this is the way it is. So believe me when I tell you, when she comes at you with this energy, you have to either agree and amplify, you have to misinterpret, you have to reframe or straight up ignore it. Because when you ignore it, it says, I'm not going to even let that in my reality. I just don't even want to talk about it. So instead, we're going to talk about this thing. And if you don't like that, I'm afraid I can't help you with that. That frame is going to make her acquiesce. And a lot of guys who get mad, by the way, they haven't had any experience with women, they're like, this can't be true. It sounds like such a douchebag thing. It's not a douchebag thing. It's a guy who respects himself, who has boundaries. Do you want to be the guy who explains himself to women, who does them favors and gets put in the friend zone? Or do you want to be the dude who's cool, leads the frame, leads women to where they want to be led, and when they act up, push boundaries, or are bitchy to you, you put out the fire by using these reframes? Of course you want to be that guy, because that's the guy who gets girls. This stuff works. Number five is reframe into a qualifying question. So she says something like, is this what you say to all the girls? What we're going to do is make her explain herself to us rather than explaining ourselves to her. <laughs> it's so gangster. So she's like, is this what you say to all the girls? And you say only the ones that seem adventurous. You're not boring, are you? And she's like, no, I'm fun. You'd be like, good, because I don't talk to boring girls. You just see what happened. She tried to challenge me. I flipped it on her saying, only girls who seem adventurous then ask her a question. You're not boring, are you? Then she's going to explain herself to me saying, no, I'm fun. I'm adventurous. And you say, cool. I accept you. You just passed the test. That's called reframe into a qualifying question. So let's go over them one more time, boys. Agree and amplify. Anything she says, you make it 100 times worse. She's like, how many phone numbers did you get tonight? You say, I got 330 phone numbers. I really wanted 350, so I got to keep going and get more. Or my favorite one is, I got nine numbers tonight. One more and I would have had a full phone number. Thank you for that, Liam. Liam is my awesome podcast editor. All right, so that's the first one, agree and amplify. Number two is misinterpret. 
She says something to you, you misinterpret it to mean something else. She's like, why are you here? You say, look, I know you're trying to leave with me right now, but we just met. So calm down a little bit, little Casanova. See how I misinterpreted? She said one thing, I misinterpreted it as something else. And then I say that to her and she buys into that frame. Now you may ask, what if she doesn't buy into the frame? Then you keep going. She throws it back at you, you throw it back at her, and this can be really fun. And eventually you guys are going to laugh. She's going to go into your feminine energy and you're going to win because you will not quit until you win. You have to win. Number three is my all-time favorite, reframe. The real question is those four important words. So your friend comes up to you and asks you any question about you. Why are you doing XYZ thing? Why did you buy that car? Why are you in that job or anything else? You say the real question is, why are you so obsessed with me, bro? Why are you paying such close attention to my life? It's a little creepy. Now, again, your friend's being a dick. He's like, bro, why would you buy that car? That thing's stupid. Bro, the real question is, why are you so focused on my life? Why are you so concerned about it? It's a little creepy, man. Focus on you, bro. Focus on you. And now you flipped it on him. Again, guys, when people are being dicks to you, you have to use this stuff. Number four is ignore. If she says something and you didn't hear it, it's like she didn't say it. So you choose what you interact with. It is a core tenet of frame control. And number five is reframe into a qualifying question. She says, is this what you say to all the girls? You say only to girls that seem fun and adventurous. You're not boring, are you? She says, no, I'm fun. Cool. You just went up 20 points in my book. You're now a negative 16. Congratulations. And guys, again, if you think I'm being a dick here, it's always with a smile. It's always playful. It doesn't have negative energy behind it. She's throwing negative energy at me. I'm catching it. I'm twisting it around and throwing it back at her in a playful way. Like she throws a baseball at my head. I catch it. I twist it and make it into a fun bouncy ball and throw it back at her and be like, haha, I gotcha. That's the vibe. It's not an asshole vibe. It's a playful vibe, but still showing that you're not to be fucked with. You're not going to buy into her frame. You're not going to explain yourself to her. You're not going to be the dude who does her favors and fluffs her feathers and blows smoke up her ass because we know what happens. It's going to put you in the friend zone. Frame control. You must have a stronger frame than she does in order for her to get attracted to you. Two bonus lessons. What if a girl's a real bitch to you? And she says something super negative to you, which I know a lot of you guys fear. In fact, one of the biggest fears that I see time and time again from guys who come into my three-month coaching program is getting rejected and getting laughed at or seen by other people. That's why I have the Approach Anxiety Destroyer. It's an NLP process that I bring guys who have bad approach anxiety through to completely eliminate their approach anxiety, and it fucking works. But... If you're afraid of a bad rejection, such as, why are you talking to us? Or get out of here, creep. Or we're not interested. And she's really bitchy to you. There's two things you can do. Let's say, for example, she's like, not interested, go away. And she's really bitchy. Now, if she's not really bitchy, I'm just like, all right, whatever. If she's like, hey, we're not interested. Could you just go away? I'll be like, yeah, have a good night. Right? No big deal. I'm unaffected because I have a strong frame. But if she's really bitchy and trying to like insult you, make fun of you, which is what a lot of you guys fear, here's what you do. So she's like, not interested, go away. You say, what? What'd you say? And the second she starts talking again, you kind of put your palm up a little bit in her face, but not completely in her face. And then you say, hey, not interested. And you walk away. So you get her to repeat herself. Then you interrupt her mid-sentence, kind of with your hand in her face, and you start walking away to save your pride. Because I know a lot of you guys are prideful. You don't want to get blown out in front of others. So if you're afraid of what other people think, if you're afraid of this bad rejection, that's how you twist it on her. Now, if she's being an ultra bitch 1000, I'm talking pocket size Satan up in this bitch, then you do this. She's like, not interested, go away. You'd be like, oh my God, your breath is kicking. I didn't want to talk to you anyway. Have a good night and brush your teeth and then walk away again. We don't become vengeful. We don't become assholes. There's never negative energy, especially behind frame control. But if she's being super bitchy to you, which occasionally will happen, I'd say probably maybe one out of 500 girls will do this to me. I may do one of those reframes, one of those flip rejections, as I call it, to kind of get the upper hand because we don't like to get blown out. 
we as men feel like we're going in with the lower hand that, dude, we have to approach her. We have to put ourselves out there. How easy is it for them to just stand there looking pretty and just reject any guy they want to? Fuck them. And that's what a lot of you guys think. But the way I think of it is I'm not going to let them intimidate me. I am more powerful than the approach anxiety that they put upon me. Think about it that way. By going up to her, I'm proving that I'm bigger than any fear I have of her. Therefore, I'm controlling the frame on my fear, on my anxiety. But I do have the NLP process, the approach anxiety destroyer for guys who come into my three-month coaching program. But gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. And here's what I'm going to do. The next two podcasts, so it's going to make three podcasts total, are going to be about frame control. My next podcast is going to be about something called requests. What do you do if a woman asks you for a favor? How do you get through that favor? What if she asks you for multiple favors? What if she's super negative asking you to be her lap dog, her lackey, pulling the company line and blowing smoke up her ass? How do you deal with that? I'm going to address that. And the next podcast after that, it's going to be next Monday, is going to be about how to deal with dudes who are assholes, who come in and try to steal your girl, who try to flex up on you and fight you in the club, who may flex up on you at work or even in the parking lot. How do you deal with these dudes and frame control them so that you can walk away with the upper hand? So today's was the five essential reversals of frame control. Thursday's is going to be requests, how to deal with a woman who usually puts dudes in the friend zone and get her insanely attracted to you. And then how to deal with overbearing men, AMOGs as we call them, alpha male of the group, and how to frame control those guys too so that you get the upper hand. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays. So if you're new here, what I'd suggest you do is go cherry pick some of my other content, see what you like, and definitely subscribe. If you could be so kind as to give me five stars, possibly a review with some writing behind it, email me at coachmarksing at gmail.com and I will send you three awesome programs. The Conversation Sniper, 150 Deadly One-Liners for Building Attraction. I love that book. Guide to the Female Orgasm, How to Make Her Look Like a Screaming Demon That Just Got Hit with the Tornado, and three texts to build massive attraction in women. Impress your friends, baffle your enemies. Those will be yours if you leave me a review. Keep listening. This is the highest rated male dating podcast on the market. I know what I'm talking about. I've had tons of experience and I want nothing more than to 10X your results with women. So go check out my other episodes. I greatly appreciate it. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays. So please stay tuned for the next one and I will see you in the next episode. Ah!